exercise. For some, it is an essential part of their day. Many are aware of its importance and benefits, yet there exists a huge amount of people that don't exercise daily. What inhibits people from exercising? Could it be neighborhood safety, socioeconomic status? These questions will be explored throughout the video. Pharmacist for CVS. Why not? It's very important um, because I want to be as healthy as possible for my children. I live in a affluent uh, neighborhood, very nice, well kept. I have uh, a couple different. Uh, there's a Charter Fitness nearby. There's an LA Fitness nearby my house. Um, I'm sure you could do things through the high school. That's it's a very nice high school where I'm at too. So yes, the neighborhood does help. They have uh, communal runs and biking things that you can do together. So absolutely. Individuals who have high incomes tend to exercise more and practice healthier eating habits compared to their less privileged counterparts. Also, the economic vitality of an area has an important influence on the built environment, particularly on the availability of space and physical structures like tennis courts, basketball courts, and parks. There is a strong association between greater physical activity and the availability of recreational facilities, opportunities to be active, and the aesthetic qualities of communities. My third year for bachelor's of science in biology. I work in a doctor's office as a patient representative right now. Yeah, I exercise regularly. It's important because it keeps you in shape and it keeps for me personally, um, I need to be able to be in shape for my sport. I play lacrosse. So we have a YMCA, we have Blast Fitness, um, and we have a lot of indoor and outside different places where you can go to exercise in Downers Group. Downers Group has a lot of different park district activities. There's adult activities um, for children as well, and the park district runs a lot of things. Um, they have programs, you can pay for them, and there's lots of opportunities if you look for them. <laughs> My neighborhood's safe, I live in Downers Grove, so um, got a lot of safety precautions up and lots of police everywhere, so we're pretty safe. Higher socioeconomic status provides more leisure time and greater opportunity for exercise. The trend confirms that the higher you are on the socioeconomic scale, the more predisposed you are to participating in recreational physical activity. The amount of education an individual has undergone is directly related to one's physical activity levels. That is, the more educated a person is, the more he or she participates in physical activity. Also, many suburban areas are saturated with plenty of gyms and exercise facilities. Many residents can take advantage of these facilities while not having to worry about neighborhood safety. Usually if people do live in you know, a low-income um, neighborhood, um, I could see where that could be a problem. And for a less safe neighborhood, do you say it does? Absolutely. You'd be less likely to leave your house um, when it's uh, dark outside or if you're running around the neighborhood or you name the reason. You just don't want to leave your house. Physical fitness and low neighborhood socioeconomic score are shown to correlate negatively. The accessibility and actual use of resources that improve health and promote exercise may be further constrained in economically disadvantaged areas. This is because some residents fear for their safety in their own neighborhoods. High traffic in neighborhood streets, reduced lighting on streets and in public spaces, and limited sidewalk continuity has been associated with a low prevalence of walking and cycling by individuals residing in deprived neighborhoods. Exercise? Honestly, once in a while, not that often. I tried. What's the highest level of education that you completed? I finished high school. And you didn't go to school after that? No, I couldn't, man. Well, right after high school, I really had to provide for my family. So, start work right away. I get off late nights. Don't have time to work out. The only time I would be able to work out would be after work. But like I said, I get off late at night. And there's been a lot of things that's been happening lately. Especially at nighttime around this neighborhood, man. It's not. I don't think it's safe, especially after work like that late. Maybe, maybe like a month ago when I was jogging, like five guys tried to jump me. They were trying to take my stuff. They eventually ended up running away. We ended up calling the police and they cut the guy who was trying to, the main guy who was trying to steal from me. So, I will say, I would definitely say that 
gang gang violence and all of that does seem to keep a certain person from working. In yeah. I have never seen the community advertising. There's no public YMCA like like they do in other cities. Uh -huh. but, but you gotta if you gotta wanna work out, you gotta pay on your own. Okay. And then, um, do you uh, feel like your uh, neighborhood promotes health and fitness? Like, do you guys have any like types of like neighborhood walks or exercise programs for little kids or adults no, or anything I, like that? I, I, I never heard of that before. Nothing. A recent national survey reported that 24.4% of the U.S. population engage in very little leisure time physical activity. It is evident that low-income individuals are more sedentary when compared with the overall U.S. population. Research suggests that low socioeconomic status and sedentary behavior come hand in hand. Whether it be dangerous neighborhoods, a lack of education, or the absence of community fitness centers, it is evident that individuals living in low socioeconomic conditions are presented with barriers that others simply do not have to endure.